Chapter 3, Bumped Up Kicks. The morning of Jack's tour kickoff, you're in a crowded parking lot with a crew of roadies scrambling to get the tour bus prepped and packed. Let's keep all the audio equipment together, please. We can't risk losing anything. You got it, boss. Word sends shivers down your spine as she rolls the heavy trunk towards the cargo hold. You try it out for yourself. Boss. I can't believe. All my dreams are coming true. I'm finally getting the recognition I've worked so hard for. Now, I just need to keep it. And soon, I'll be a household name in my own right. But, as you look around the busy parking lot, Jean's threat echoes in your ears. If Jack does anything to embarrass the label, he'll be dropped for good. And I'll make sure your career is over before it starts. I can't let that happen. From here on, everything has got to be done by the book. Hello, Earth to Estrella. You snap out of it to find your tour assistant handing you your coffee for a change, and as you sip it, you feel more in control than ever. We're uh, locked and loaded, ready for transport. If you wanted to say a few words before we go, now's the time. Thanks, Polly. Let's do this. He falls in a step beside you, and as you cross the parking lot, you gather the backup band, crew, and staff. Good morning, everyone. I'm Estrella Villanueva, your new tour manager. Who's ready to hit the road? Well, we're ready. But we can't really speak for our star. She nods to Jack's empty parking spot, and though your stomach falls, you quickly cover with a smile. Then they have changed her from the zombie book. Just saying. I at least wipe the dirt off of her face. Looks like Jack's off to a bit of a slow start, but I'm sure he'll be here soon. Let me just get an ETA. Step away, whipping out your phone, and the moment the line connects, you don't even bother with a greeting. What time is your arrival listed on your itinerary? Because mine says you should have been here by now. Well, hello to you too, Estrella. Don't tell me the power from your promotion's gone to your head already. Actually, do. You look fantastic when you're bossy. You can practically hear the smile in his voice as he speaks, the challenge evident. He's doing this on purpose, but I know how to handle Jack. I should... Lay down the law. Jack, I'm about to be downright stunning. Drop whatever you're doing and get here now. And if I don't, what do you plan on doing about it? You can picture the smirk he's wearing, and though you try to stay mad, you can't help but feel one of your own. Why don't you come here and find out? Hmm, you know, I think I might. Look up. Your eyes zero in on Jack, and all his carefree radiance stepping out of an SUV, and even from across the lot, his gaze is magnetic. It's a beautiful day to kick off a tour, don't you think? I think you're late. Hmm, well, I'm the one who hits the stage, so really. Am I late, or are you just all early? He breezes past you, heading towards the remnants of the craft service table, and you take a deep, calming breath before following. Look, I didn't want to scare you, but Jean called. If you piss off the label one more time, we're both fired, and I told you the reason I do any of this is for the music. It's how I express myself, connect with my fans. He defiantly plucks an apple from the craft services table and turns to face you, tossing it lazily from hand to hand. I couldn't care less what Gene has to say. He, as he spits out the name, your blood boils and you take an angry step closer. Well, Gene's my boss and he's currently lobbling to give you the boot. So I suggest you start caring now. Get on the bus. He shoots you a mischievous grin unfazed. The sound of an apple making contact with his palms only heightens your frustration. Make me. We both know you want to. His eyes trail down your face, locking on your lips, and you can't help giving them an errant lick. Jack. <sighs> we can't mix business with pleasure. Flirting with you has been fun, but... But what? 
Now that Jean's put his nose where it doesn't belong, you're ready to call it quits, pretend it never happened? He leans in to whisper in your ear conspiratorially. Hmm, that's not e going to be easy as you think. And you know it. His lips graze the shell of your ear and you're briefly caught up in the sensation before coming back to your senses and pushing him away. Jack, for the next three months you are my job. Nothing less and definitely nothing more. Snatch his apple midair and point to the waiting bus where the rest of the staff watches you two through the windows curiously. Now get your ass on the bus. Get ready to perform. We have the first night of an Indio fest in less than 12 hours. He holds his hands up in a fox deference and saunters to the door bus, his eyes never once leaving yours. Okay, okay. One, s one song singing, bus riding pop star coming right up. But you should know if riling you up is this easy, we're in for a fun three months. After giving the driver the all clear to depart, you climb aboard the bus and find Jack sprawled in one of the bunks. What are you doing? Giving the springs a test run. My back is crazy sensitive. That one was too soft. This one's a little too hard. Okay, Goldilocks, up you go. You shoo him up, pressing a hand to his chest and reveling at the muscles beneath your fingertips as you usher him to the private room in the back. I specifically assigned the rest of the crew these bunks to give you your own space. So... So you can banish me to Siberia? No thanks. Siberia... I was trying to do you a favor. <clears throat> Look, this is your first tour, so I'm gonna give you a tip. An artist sharing space with a crew helps break the ice. The more comfortable the crew, the better the shows. Though there is more drama as crew members get to know each other intimately. He tries to skirt around, but you wedge yourself between him and the newest bunk he's set his eyes on, coming nearly chest to chest. Ah, oh, very funny. This is another one of your attempts to rile me up, but it's not going to work this time. It's tour basics, Estrella. If you trap a bunch of single people in a tin can, they're going to want to touch each other. See for yourself. Jack nods to the roadies, all mingling as they settle in. I've been rebuilding it for a while, but when I finish, you should uh, go for a drive with me. I know the perfect road. It's a lot like me. All curves, no brakes. Yep. And you stare in stunned silence. He takes advantage of the moment and slips past you to flop onto an empty bunk. Told you. Well, we can't afford drama or anything else that's going to slow us down. So spread the word. The bus is a no zone. All that touching is going to have to wait until after the tour. Besides, it's better with tension anyway. You join Jack in the bunk and he scooches to make room for you, using his hips to drive the motion with short, powerful thrusts. Nothing bears to the heat of the moment when raw animal instincts takes over. As he gets comfortable next to you, his thighs separate, and the moment of, or the thought of you sprawled between them springs to mind unbidden. You're tearing each other's clothes off with no regard for anyone else, and everything in you is screaming, you've got to have it now. Ahem. <clears throat> As your gaze snaps up to meet his, you realize you've been staring at him. He quirks an eyebrow, the intensity of his expression out enough to make you throb. Do you need a moment alone? I'm serious, Jack. Rules are rules. That includes the two of us. I'm putting my foot down. Are you kidding me? We're on tour. For your job. This is a work trip, not spring break. Jack sits up in the tiny bunk. And suddenly, he's only inches away. Life on the road's a bit of both. The pressure to succeed, the adrenaline, long nights, close proximity. His eyes fall to your mouth, causing everything inside of you to tense deliciously, and when he whisper, speaks again, it's a whisper. It's not a matter of if someone hooks up on the bus, but when. His words stir up a craving deep within, and as he leans closer, you can't help but zero in on his full lips before pulling away. Well, if your presence out here is going to be disruptive, then that's all the more reason you should take the room. You know, I would, but I think it's just found the perfect bunk. He stands abruptly, slips into the oblivious taken bunk, and littered with your schedules, charts, and plans. 
No, you didn't. You found my bunk, so if you don't mind. Climb the ladder, grab him by the arm, trying to wrest him from the mattress when all of a sudden the bus lurches forward. As it turns out, be park. As it turns out of the parking lot, you tumble forward into the bunk and find yourself on top of him. I was just thinking we should share it. Great minds at all. What? No. You are getting out. O-U-T. You try to roll him, but he uses the leverage to pin you to the mattress, and as he straddles your hips, you feel yourself melt. Thanks to your rule, this is probably the most fun I'm going to have in bed. So if you want this bunk, you're going to have to take it from me. Wrestle him for dominance. Yes, you're on it. Okay. <sighs> because this is my bunk, I wouldn't be so sure of that. He tightens his grip on you, his fingers lacing themselves in yours as his thighs tense around you to hold you steady. Considering I've got the high ground at all. Oh, I'm so sure. I'm going to let you make the rules so I can literally beat you at your own game. Jack laughs loud and long and genuine, and the sound is so contagious it brings a smile to your face. Fine, since you're so confident, how about this? Whoever steps foot in the back bedroom first gets banished there. Oh my god, it's not a banishment. Oh, yeah. Then tell me why, with him distracted, you make your move, attempting to get out of his clutches. Fuck my hips. Catching him off guard, you thrust against the mattress, using the springs for leverage to propel him forward. He catches himself inches from your face as his eyes flicker down your lips. What the hell was that? You aren't the only one with skills in bed. If you want my bunk, you're gonna have to hang on tight. Yes, ma'am. He tries to inch you towards the edge of the mattress, but you quickly tighten your thighs around his waist, clamping down. If I'm going overboard, so are you. Mutually assured destruction is only a play when you're sure the other person doesn't have any tricks up their sleeves. He leans in, pressing the full length of his body against you as his weight settles in between your legs deliciously. You fight back a moan. Mm. And I'm not about using every weapon I have in my arsenal. Oh, I get it. This is your idea of foreplay, isn't it? You're the one who told the label you'd make me behave, so make me. Before you can reply, the bus takes another turn onto the highway, seeing the two of you spilling out onto the floor. Jack breaks your fall, and you launch your feet with Jack joining you moments later. Chest heaving, you find yourself in a standoff. That was a pretty high fall, and using me as a crash pad was effective, to say the least. What can I say? If I want something, I'm always going to find a way to make it happen. Mmm, so you're not ready to quit yet, then? Not unless you are. Don't let let her take it down, Jack. You got this. I don't know. Estrella's kind of scrappy. I'm putting my money on her. Jack scoffs, and as the crew la looks on laughing and jeering, he moves in closer. Each step slow and methodical, he lowers his voice. Come on, Estrella. Is this really something you want to fight me on? Mmm. I sure do. Unless you would rather not lose in front of an audience. I get wanting to surrender privately and save face, considering this is your tour. Jack doesn't stop approaching until you're chest to chest, and as you peer up to find him defiantly, he grins. Mmm, exactly the opposite, I'm afraid. But there's something about being watched that brings out my best work. Jack rips you by the waist and heaves you over his shoulder, ass up. Hey, no fair! Mmm, all's fair in love and bunk wars, Estrella. Hope you like Siberia. Say hi to the abominable snowman for me. <laughs> but as you try to wrangle free, the bus's momentum picks up, knocking you from his grasp and sending the two of you into the kitchenette. This bus even has a kitchenette. I'm not going anywhere that easily. 
Uh, you're half right. He stalks towards you, letting his hands on either side of you. And as you back hits the counter, you realize his move. You're not going anywhere. You look around wildly for an escape, but he blocks your way each time until you're left with no other option. Mm, go through his legs. Tell you what. Why don't we just, uh... Before finishing your sentence, you dive to your knees and try to scurry between his. As much as I love the view from back here, I'm gonna need you back on your feet. He drops down, trapping you between his thighs, and in seconds he's hauling you back up, his body wrapped around yours. I'm starting to think you're enjoying this. Hmm, who said I wasn't? This didn't stop since both of you flying. As your back hits the opposite wall, Jack comes seconds away from slamming into you. Watch it! But, as you throw up your hands, he braces himself on the wall behind you. His breath ghosts your face as his chest heaves. You okay? Fine. But I'd be a lot better if you just give me my bunk back. Are you kidding me? We're bouncing around like pinballs in here and you still only care about the damn bunk? So do you, obviously, or you'd given it back to me by now. I couldn't care less about the bunk, Estrella. His eyes flicker to your lips and glance at your heart racing, thudding hard against your chest. Let me guess, just riling me up again? Hmm, I thought I'd tease you a bit, flirt a little, go about my merry way. I never imagined you'd be so feisty. His gaze wanders, and as your nipples tense, threatening to show through your blouse, you realize you've got one tool in your belt. He thinks he's got this in the bag, so let's. So he's got. He's let his guard down. Now I need to capitalize on it. I should distract him with. My hands. You like that about me? Your hands trail down his chest and abs, sinking ever lower. His muscles tense beneath your fingertips as he draws in a long, long, slow breath. Mmm, what can I say? I love the chase. You push against him, stealthily backing him towards the back bedroom. Well, at least now, I can go back to this lonely little bedroom and know that I gave you my all. This doesn't have to end, you know. You're always more than welcome in the bunk with me. You push him further, pretending to weigh your options. Well, I guess we could share the bunk and spend all those long, lonely nights on the road together. He lifts an intrigued brow, and you stop just in front of him, the warmth of his body melting into yours. Only for you to reach past him, open up the door at the back of the bus, and reveal the spare bedroom. Wait a minute, Estrella! Before he can finish his sentence, you give him a gentle push over the threshold and into a waiting couch. But I think you'll be fine here, alone. Guess I'm not about above using my appeal as a weapon either. Well played, but I won't be forgetting this anytime soon. You grip the doorknob and with a sly smile, you waggle your fingers in a wave. The only thing you need to worry about is remembering your lyrics. I'll come get you when we make it to India. Aha. Uh -huh. After checking in at the Indio Fest, you and Jack hit the fairgrounds, and you fan yourself against the heat as you study your itinerary. All right, I managed to make a few lucrative deals in exchange for posting Picta content, so we have stories to shoot now. And then... Jack, can I get a picture next? You look up to see Jack swarmed by girls in bikini tops and shorts, all trying to take the perfect selfie. Anything for my, uh, loyal fans? Jack welcomes her into a friendly side hug, but as a girl holds up her phone, she presses her lips to his cheek before snapping the picture. Thank you, thank you, thank you! Oh, uh, yeah, sure thing. Okay, now, I have this idea for a vid. Quickly, motion for Jack's head of security. Salas, can you please keep the fan interaction to a minimum? After the TMI incident, we need to be on a high alert. I 
you got it, Estrella. Oh, hey, he's security in this uh, game, too. In seconds, he and his team clear out the young women, and as they set up a perimeter to keep the fans at bay, he raises his eyebrows at you. Hmm, thanks for the save. Of course, I'm not just going to let you get mauled. Besides, that's what security is for. I'm honestly surprised it took Solas so long to do anything. What was he waiting for, a written invitation? On a scale of 1 to 10, that was barely a 1. You've seen how crazy things can get, it probably didn't even register. But he's keeping an eye out for me since I started my in music, so I trust him with my life. And uh, when he's not around, it's good to know I have you looking out for me. He shoots you a smile, and as the thrill flicks through your chest before settling in your stomach, as full-blown butterflies. You shut them down immediately, repeating the mantra you've been telling yourself all day. Just doing my job, because I am at work. Is that why you're dressed for the office, even though it's a million degrees out here? You're gonna get heat stroke, you know, come on. He leads you to a pop-up clothing shop and picks out a slinky silk top and wide-brimmed hat, perfect for keeping the sun off. Music festivals are all about a looking hot, enjoying the artist, art, hottest artist. You've already got me, so why not get the full experience? Cool off with this hot number. Hmm, interesting. You slip off to try them on before coming back and giving a twirl. Well, that was just for looking hot. His eyes travel the length of your new frame, or your frame, lingering on your newly exposed midriff. Check and check. Even in the cooler clothes, your body burns as hot as the sun under his watchful gaze and you clear your throat. <clears throat> right, let's get on with those picta stories, shall we? You drag Jack over to a space with less visual background noise and place your phone on a tripod. Okay, camera set, ready to go. I've got a couple of scripts here if you want to run lines. Uh, what if I... What I want is to let loose at the biggest musical festival in the country. All work and no play makes jo Jack a dull boy, you know. We could've if someone wasn't late. Now we have a schedule to stick to. But we're going to have plenty of fun with these ads. Look, this one's for... A dating app. Produced by Lonely Hearts LLC, Singleton is the only app for perpetually alone. User experience may vary. If I use that app, I'd have a bona fide stalker by the end of the day. You don't have to use it. You just have to sell the dream, make them think anyone could be one swipe away. Even you. I don't want to sell anything, I just want to make music. What are my fans going to think when they see this? They won't see you at all if this tour gets cancelled because you got dropped from the label. Which is exactly what's going on if T Ty from TMI drags out this bogus assault story. Thanks for that, by the way. You know, considering you were the one who actually assaulted him. Because you wouldn't listen to me. Kind of like you're doing now. Jeez, you're so... In your anger, words escape you, and as you fumble for new ones, he steps closer, bringing you eye level with his mouth as he growls. So what? A look right him in the eye. You lock eyes with him, neither are you willing so much as to blink as the world comes to a standstill around you. Infuriating. You let the word roll off your tongue, enunciating every syllable, and that's just for a split second his eyes flick to your lips. You know, well, I can't help what you bring out of me. The huskiness of his voice takes your mind straight to the bedroom, and you can't help but think of another script you saw. Hold that thought. You scramble through the pile of scripts until you find the one you're looking for. Dynamic energy. How about this one? They say they want you shirtless, sweaty, drinking their sports drink. How much easier could it be? That's it? I don't have to embarrass myself. No more than you usually do. Hey! Now, take it off. He shoots you a look before shouldering off his fastened shirt until he's standing bare-chested, a bead of sweat rolling off of his packs. Mm. 
and you hurry behind the camera and hit record before flashing him a thumbs up. Action! But as he stares you down through the camera lens, a mischievous smirk at his lips, you see the exact moment he decides to go rogue. Tired of being told what to do and when, dynamic energy is the drink for anyone who can't be tamed, like me. What the hell is he doing? That's not in the script. You mime drinking, hoping to get him back on track, but instead he brings it to his lips and lets it pour down his body. The drink flows down the hills and valleys of his abs, conjuring thoughts of lapping every drop from the V-shaped ridges at his hips. Oh my god, that was so hot. We love you, Jack. The fans around her join in on screaming, drawing eyes from everywhere and egging Jack on. I could call cut and make him do it all over, but who knows what I'd get. I need to find a way to roll with this. I'll... Capture his appeal. As Jack hams it up for the fans, you stop recording and start editing, cutting the video down to the moment when Jack douses himself. That's not exactly what they asked for, but if this crowd's reaction is any indication, I don't think they'll care. You throw on a filter, then slow-mo the video until it's unclear whether the ad is for the drink or the man. Either way, I think I'm parched. You and your camera get a good look. His voice brings you back to your senses, and as he approaches, drenched and half-naked, you focus your attention on the footage. It's not what they asked for, but uh, I definitely think it'll... It'll get them the engagement they wanted. Hmm, great. Now that that's over, I say we flex our VIP passes and see some of the other artists make a okay uh, on the main stage. Whoa, who said we were done? I'm sorry you don't like the business side of the music industry, but this isn't... This is... This isn't busy work. We need the money from these ads to keep us from expensing Ty's settlement to IR. That way, the tour's profit margins... His eyelids go heavy, and as his head bobs, he fakes a snore. Exasperated, you nudge him, and he jolts awake with a grin. Look, ugh, I know you're one of those work nerds who loves her job. And I respect it, I, I really do. But there's more to Indio Fest than filling other people's pockets, and I'm gonna prove it to you. Before you can protest, he takes your hand and escorts you to the Ferris wheel, breezing past the line and into the pod. Jack, we don't have time for... Would you just look? He puts a hand on your back, moving you closer to the window, and as his excitement builds, he narrates the experience in a hushed voice. The bright lights of the festival, the way they blend into the fading sky. This is what it's all about. Oh, really? And what is it, exactly? Indio Fest? Because if so, I think music festivals should be about music and great views was an exact line in the business model. Oh, anyone ever tell you you're too literal? I meant life. It should be this instead of a joyless slog of work. Take summer, for example. Summer nights are supposed to be full of memories, laughter. His gaze falls briefly to your lips, and you're suddenly aware of your thigh grazing his of the warmth of his hand on your back. Pretty girls. Mm, it all sounds great, but that's just what your promoters want you to think. Indio Fest is nothing more than nostalgia farming and FOMO. It's not some heady intellectual representation of life. It's not even real. It feels real. Your heart races as he leans in closer, but before you can say a word, he points past you out into the distance to the main stage. Look out there. Can't you feel that? How saturated the air is, how full of energy it is, of electricity, nerves, life. I guess, Jack. I'm telling you the music, the adrenaline that starts from the first note, the roar of the crowd. The eyes find yours as expression one of pure bliss. That feeling is everything. I swear if I listen hard enough, I can almost hear them chanting my name right now. I think you're also a little full of yourself. You listen hard and are immediately surprised when Jack's name begins to echo faintly as if in the distance. Wait, I think I can hear it too. You reach for your phone to check the time and find several missed texts from Polly. 
Holly, hey, Estrella, it's almost our call time. Are you and Jack on your way? Uh, Estrella, we're up next. Answer your text 911. Jack's being announced. Where are you? Holy crap, Jack. Those chants are real. Your set's about to start without you. Rot row. And without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Hand down description, plenty of things to check out there, ways to support, and hey, consider joining our Discord, where you too can sit and have conversations with me and many others. Aside from that, uh, thanks again for watching. Sorry that this came a day late, but again, uh, still trying to get back on my feet, and also I'm so behind. I'm going to be honest with you, I have so much going on. Uh, you know, in terms of trying to play catch up with content and then, you know, personal life and just some side projects I'm working on and just <sighs> a lot's going on. So once again, thanks for watching. Catch you all later. Peace out.